Okay. It's back live. All right, y'all. I'm back live over here. Okay, so this, um, this, uh, the portion that we're reading here in the book of inspiration, it sounds a lot about what we, uh, a lot, uh, really similar to what we read in the book of luminaries when we're reading through the book of Enoch, if y'all read it. I know most of y'all have. Um, but a lot of these things do not disturb, do not disturb my word. I might, I might have to see how to use my do not disturb, but I never use it. So I'm gonna have to look at that. Um, but with the book of Enoch and counting like the moon's days and actually getting out there, that's where some, well, I don't know. Some people do get out there and observe, but some people, when they don't, they, they start getting into like the 13th month and all those different things to where it becomes confusing to some people, especially if you don't actually get out there and observe yourself. Now, it's going to take a couple of years. I'm going to just be honest with you because I've been doing it um, uh, uh, probably like a year a year less than what we've been doing live so about three years i've been tracking there are some things that i'm just now grasping a hold of by watching marking looking at the data and what's changing and what's happening you know with the sun moon and the stars right so it's going to take a few years to do that you have to have patience and you have to be consistent and diligent in order to see the the pattern right um hold on but it was something else i was about to say with uh Let me, let me just keep reading and see if it come back to me. Verse 21 on page 709 in chapter 14. Neither shall it matter. Let me go back to 20. Such then shall be the months in any and every year. For these are the moon's times as Jehovah created them. Neither shall it matter or not whether the months overlap on New Year's Day as they are created and moved by the Almighty. Even so man shall compute and register them. Okay, that's what it was. <laughs> that's what I was about to say. Okay. So where what I found out is what people sometimes overlook when you read in the scriptures, you can the Holy Bible, KJV, whatever version, when it starts talking about this and you're researching this, and when they start um they start calculating time by actually watching, you have to remember, you have to do it, you have to call the new moon from the land where you're currently at. And what I found a lot of times, uh people here that live in America. They try and do everything according to Jerusalem's time, but you don't live over there, right? So you get it off. So if everybody celebrated it according to the land mass where they currently live, if you tracked it here, you would do it on time. Because remember, Jerusalem in America, they're ahead of us by like, 10 12 hours just depending on where so if you're doing it according to how jerusalem calls it you're already late right because you would be the it because you're waiting for them to call it when according to the time zones we're we're behind them like a whole day almost a whole day half a day just depend on where right so you cannot do that that's why when you're looking for it don't look for anybody that live outside of your time zone or whatever you're still getting used to it trying to track it but you need to like verify your callings who called it out who's seen just verify it so you have a few consistent things especially if the skies are covered with chemtrails and clouds and stuff and you can't see it because that happens a lot at least in virginia i know it does for me so i learned how to um use different resources and check in with different people at the places close by me that i've checked into and found that their callings are credible um then i can call it um so but if you understand that when you start tracking the time the creator's time clock and stuff you you won't go wrong at least in that point you just remember calculate it from where you currently live and if you decide to go visit and live in israel jerusalem wherever over in africa you decide just to go live there then because you're living there now now you would observe it based on the land you're currently living in so always remember that uh anita says as it states in in 14, the Sabbath has to do with the new year and is the moon. As as it states in 14, the Sabbath has to do with the new year and is the moon days the same. I think I'm still reading that wrong. The moon, day, the, the moon days stay the same, like they don't change. What changes is how we're tracking them and trying to track them according to like the um 
the uh, Gregorian calendar that we're currently on, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, then looking at January, February, March. That's what kind of screw us up, right? So you got to spend a little time washing it through, making sure you get the first, second, like with the Passover, it's considered like the first month of the year. You got to learn how to like look at it from the perspective. You You have to understand both so you can line up. Okay, so... March is the first month, right? So when you get to March, instead of us looking at a March being the third month of the year, we can retrain ourselves the way we think. Okay, this is the first, you know. Um, but the moon days, I, maybe rephrase your question. Rephrase it. That's not what the question is. Rephrase it, because I'm not understanding it. As it. Hold on. Let me read the 14th verse. So also shall every seventh day be a Sabbath day, for which reason seven days shall be one week, being six days for labor and one for rest and worship. Okay, rephrase your question for me, Anita, because I'm, I'm still real tired. Okay, while you rephrasing it, let me just keep reading so we can, so we can move along and I'll come back. Okay. Neither shall it matter, neither shall it matter or not whether the months overlap a New Year's Day as they are created and moved by the Almighty, even so shall man compute and register them. For example, a New Year's Day may come upon the 20th day of the 12th month or on another moon's day. Still, as they fall, so shall they be numbered in truth. As the moon's time differeth to different continents, so shall the months times of the inhabitants of different continents be locally unto them. But in the intercourse between different nations on different continents, the month times shall not be enumerated. But in all such cases, the year and the days thereof shall be named as, for example, the 70th year and the 96th day. And it shall come to pass that the Sabbath days all around the world shall be the same day unto all people, even with the travel of the sun, whereby Jehovah's heavenly kingdoms shall be in concert with mortals as to times and seasons in all things. Okay, read 13 and 14. 13 and 14. Okay, go back up. The seventh day of the new year shall be thy next Sabbath day. And it shall be a day of rest and of spiritual communion and praise to Jehovah and his creations with singing and oratory. So also shall every seventh day be a Sabbath day, for which reason seven days shall be one week, being six days for labor and one for rest and worship. I still need a little bit more help. Okay, what's the question? Like, rephrase the question because I'm... I'm really not understanding. Y'all got to help a sister out this morning. I told y'all how hard it was me. <laughs> how hard it was for me this morning. Okay. As it states in 14, the Sabbath has to do with the new year and is the moon days the same? I'm live, Tiffany. No, it's not a recorded live. I'm actually live, live. Y'all, y'all gonna, if y'all don't rephrase it, I don't, I'm kind of stuck right now because I'm, I'm not getting it. Or oh, somebody, somebody understand what, what Anita is asking, please answer. That way I can read it and maybe it'll click for me, right? Are the moon days, oh, thank you, Ima, are the moon days, yes, 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 <laughs> yeah, okay, thank you, yes. The moon days, the like the holy days of the moon, are the same as the Sabbath days. And I forget exactly where back here, but it talks about it in a couple places. Um, yeah, I forget. I would have to go look unless somebody knows. Um, Tiff, I saw your message. Copy and paste it over here on Facebook. I mean, on um. Because it, it, I'm not going to be able to read that. I don't think. Hold on. Let me see. She was just explaining it. Oh, hold on. Okay. Let me read that. 
Okay, she said, okay, in 13, it states that the Sabbath is calculated from the new year. So it sounds like the Sabbath should continue from there and not change each month. Let me go back and read it. Okay. I'm going to have to go back further than that. I, I get what you're saying. Hold on. Hold on. Let's just go back, y'all. Um, verse, verse 11. Tay said, For which reason the old year's day shall be named the most holy Sabbath day? Behold, it is in accord with his heavenly kingdoms, and it shall be with thee a day of spiritual communion and of praise to Jehovah and his creations, with music and oratory and ceremonies and processions for thy youth, orderly and well-disciplined. And on the New Year's Day, thou shalt rejoice and sing and dance, mingling together, old and young, even as the old year and the new year are joined together side by side. The seventh day of the new year shall be thy next Sabbath day, and it shall... Hold on. Hold on. I think it's trying to click together. Hold on. The seventh day of the new year shall be thy next Sabbath day, and it shall be a day of rest and of spiritual communion and praise to Jehovah and his creations with singing and oratory. So also shall every seventh day be a Sabbath day, for which reason seven days shall be one week, being six days for labor and one for rest and worship. For this hath been proven in all the world to be good for man. These then shall be the moon's days, months. The first new moon's day after the new year's day shall be the beginning of the first month. Verse 17, the first new moon's day after New Year's Day shall be the beginning of the first month and the completion of the fourth quarter of the moon shall be the completion of the first month and it shall be named first month. The next four quarters of the moon shall be the second month and it shall be named the second month. So remember, each quarter of the moon is a Sabbath day, right? So I'm just trying to keep all this together. The first new moon's day after the new year shall be the beginning of the first month and the completion of the fourth quarter of the moon shall be the completion of the first month and it shall be named first month. The next four quarters of the moon shall be the second month and it shall be named second month. And the next completed four quarters of the moon shall be named third month and so on to the completion of the year. Such then shall be the months in any and every year such then shall be the months in any and every year, for these are the moon's times as Jehovah created them. Neither shall it matter or not whether the months overlap a New Year's Day as they are created and moved by the Almighty. I think that's one of the, the key points here about it overlapping the New Year's Day, right? We got to account for this. And we also have to account for being actually able to see it reads like the sabbath and the moon days are not the same hold on let me go back up are the moon days and the sabbaths the same to me right now it is but i could be wrong hold on that's what i'm trying to go back and make sure i'm understanding this right some poetic first of all poetically Poetic, poetic Lily, 86, Shalom. Some people believe the Sabbath is solar-based. Other feels it is lunar-based. I know a YouTuber who also counts the Sabbath from a new year and keeps it the same day the whole year. Now, the yeah, I know this like, I, I think that's wrong. Because think about... Think about your birthdays, at least how I'm understanding from my own personal tracking. So you know how December 25th is always the same day of the year, December 25th. 
every year. But every year, December 25th is on a different day. Like Christmas could be on a Monday this year. Next year to be on a Tuesday. The next year it'll jump to Thursday. Like we see the cycling of the moon. If we observing it, it seems to um it seems to jump around throughout the week. Um I think it's the same thing. We gotta be able to look at all of that and merge it together. And Tiffany said it does read like the Sabbath and the moon days are not the same. Um I'm just going to have to look into it a little bit more because I'm not 100% sure you asked a good question. Uh, his, his his Sabbaths shift annually. So I've I seen a couple people do that. So like he'll, his Sabbaths will be all the same for one year. Say they'll be Friday for 2022. The next year they're going to shift and all the Sabbaths are going to be on Monday. So he keeps them the same every year for the whole year. Like lump them all together right that's what you're saying poetically i think that's what you're saying his sabbath shift annually but if yes okay so I, i've seen people do that too and that to me that's just from my personal observation i think i get what they're doing but if you track it daily and you have, remember, you have to account, I'll reread it again. We have to account for the transition days of the moon, right? So if you go to the book of Enoch, right? The book of Enoch in the book of luminaries, Enoch chapter se chapters 72 to chapters 82. That's considered the book of luminaries, right? Um, but it, it gets into how um, I, I could see that you could do that if the moon didn't take her own path a couple different months out of the year, right? Then it will line up, but it goes into talking about, and it even says, it says, this is where man goes wrong with calculating the time because they don't account for the transition. The dark days, which are considered new moons, think about the different, um, uh, the, dif the differences people have with calling out the new moon. Right, so some people call the new moon when it's completely black, and technically they are correct because when when she is completely without light in her disc, she is considered a new moon. But you can't call a new moon if you can't see it. But some people still call it when it's dark, right? So, but when you call it when it's dark, how do you differentiate which day you're calling the dark moon on? Is it the first transition day, or is it the second transition day, or is it one of the long ones? Is it the third one? Because then you start if you call it on the second day that means uh your count is going to be different from calculating a year if you would call it on the first or the third transition day you see what i mean so all of that has to be accounted which is why in order to get the count right to count the sabbath wait till you see it that's what it has to be confirmed from land to land from where you live right so i'm keeping all of that into account just to make sure this is it's like matt it's like um it's like getting to the equation part of the math, right? So you have to remember all of these factors, even when you have like the multiplication, subtraction, uh, I'm sorry, addition. If you have a, a big math equation and you have all the different <laughs> types of math in this one equation, there's a certain order to the equation now. It's called order of operations. So even with calculating this, there's an order of operations. We have to consider all of it. Hold on. Angela, hey sis, I think because we on we're on a solar calendar, it messes up our tracking. We have different days and different months. Yeah, take for why can't the moon days be holy and not be a Sabbath? From a spiritual point of view, well, that's a good question. Why can't the moon days be holy and not be a Sabbath? I never thought about that, but a. I don't know from a from a spiritual standpoint you can make every day holy if you want to right um but from a calculation point yeah the sabbath is yes the sabbath is holy i guess the question is is the weekly sabbath solar based and the feast days moon based don't get me lying to y'all <laughs> right okay so let me just 
from how I'm, I'm, and I'm still learning. I'm just like, still at the beginning. Maybe I'm not sure if Selah here, but he does a lot of this, and he's been tracking way longer than I have for like almost 20 years. He's been tracking, so I'm still trying to get some of these pieces to the. I'm still trying to learn the order of operations. So I'm definitely gonna have a better understanding in a year. So everything that I'm saying today, we probably need to set on fire. I don't know. I'm still holding the matches. If I need to set on fire something, I said, I'll come back. Be like, yo, I was wrong. Let's correct this. That's just the way I am. So I don't know. So, I, yeah. We've been down this road with Sayla. Um, That's why I like these scenes calendar because it's easy. And I haven't looked at these scenes calendar. I'm just now starting to get into the Essenes gospel, going through it and everything and reading. It's going to take me a while to get there. Um, but what I do know is, right, according to what we know and even what this teaches in Owaspi, right, as you know better, you do better, right? So if we're doing it wrong now, there's still grace from the Father for us because we're learning, right? We should be. He wants us to think for ourselves. Okay, well, that's good. Did you consider this? And he'll be like, you ain't doing the Sabbath right. Angels, don't even go near them because I'm, I'm ready to kill them all. And people would want you to believe that, that if you don't do it just right and perfectly, you know that the Father is just going to dismiss you all together, take all the blessings from your life and take your breath and send you to hang out and hide out forever. How long? Because you couldn't seem to get the Sabbath right, right? Some people really believe that like the Father is, he, do you do that to your children when they're learning and when they're growing? We're like in that same predicament, uh, not predicament, that's the wrong way to look at it. We're growing just like children grow, right? They're observing, they're testing things with their hands. They're getting stuff wrong and, until they don't anymore. And then they get it right and they get a hold to it. That's exactly like what we're doing, right? So I definitely don't have the whole Sabbath piece down, with, especially all the new information I'm learning. But what I do know is that I'm practicing the truth according to my highest light at this point or my highest knowledge of all the information i have and y'all have some good questions that i ain't even looked at yet so i gotta i, I still gotta get into all of that and add all that to my learning and test things and track and you know so but yeah we'll i'm sure we'll we're gonna turn this corner again up the road a little bit with more information to add to it yeah so i'll go back let me just oh yeah oh, we have 43 minutes all right let's do this Let's read the whole chapter again, right? Yeah, Tifa, I say keep every day holy. I, you can't go wrong with that. And you can choose to do that. And every day should be holy. Wake up. Father, thank you for this breath of life. Ha, that's what they call a ha, a low ha. At the end of ha, it's the breath of life, the breath from the creator. The, Y'all, the, the island people here, the way that they look at the creator and life, I'm like, yo, they say that in Owaspi. I'm like, yo, this is what Owaspi is teaching us. It's like they live that even in the culture. That's why I say if y'all come here, you absolutely must go to the Polynesian Cultural Center. It brings the islands together and their beliefs and their culture and stuff. And even, listen, when you got somebody telling your story and they don't actually, they're not actually a part of it. And they don't actually engross themselves in the neighborhood. Like some people can go tell your family story, but they don't know like the little inside jokes that family members got going on and the different beefs and how we deal with it. But somebody, it's like learning about the different cultures and even like with their gods and they worship this and they worship that. What I'm understanding now by being here and actually listening to the native people, just like Hawaii, pronouncing Hawaii, that is wrong. It's not pronounced Hawaii, it's pronounced Hawaii, right? And I'm like, you know what? I used to hear people say Hawaii, but I'm thinking they might have a lisp or something. They don't know how to pronounce it, the wa, right? And I'm thinking they were wrong when we were wrong all the time. Like the natives, you can tell, like the natives from the people who was like being taught still don't know how to pronounce it, right? And I'm famous for that. I'm like, Hawaii, Hawaii, me, it, it, it doesn't look foolish, me, <laughs> An outsider come in trying to teach the natives how to pronounce their words based on what I read in the book and how I heard my teacher pronounce it because they didn't got it wrong too. And I'm just like, oh, we got so much to learn. I'm like, wow, forgive me. It's pronounced um, Hava 
E, right? And some people say Hawaii, like it's one word, and it's not. When you come, you will see there's an apostrophe that breaks up the two I's, like Hawaii, right? It's H-A-W-A-I, apostrophe I, and they enunciate it here. Like we talk to like the native local people, even from the different islands. And if you watch that video where, when I said, um, and I'm going to post it here on YouTube, the guy, um, uh, the Samoan people, they are, they are beautiful. Samoan people are beautiful and they are absolutely hilarious. We've met a lot of Samoan people here and just talking to them and all of them seem to have this sense of humor. Um, but he gives you a little bit of, uh, um, history on the language and even them in Samoa and even how they have like the, not wars, but how they, they're like brothers and sisters, but you go down, uh, uh, a, a, a few miles or whatever they're pronouncing the same thing different and he gave a couple examples of even the words that we use I'm like yo that do sound like our word like he said it's like we all saying the same thing we just have different pronunciations for it but that that video was really good right it's probably about seven minutes long but watch that he's funny that's the one I said uh, the Samoan people are hilarious. Watch that. Not only was it funny, it was very, very educational. And I'm just, the way I'm like looking at people, the way they relate to one another, you know how from America, we looking at people like, oh, they white, they black, or oh, they Chin Chinese or whatever. Um, here, you get the feel that it's, and it, it clearly it's, it's not about race it's more about the cultures because it's different people from different places some being born native some coming from different places maybe marrying with the natives and they produce offspring and then they're um they're born and raised in this land and that's all they know it's really more about culture and not like color of the skin so when they say um, Samoan. Well, we can clearly tell native born Samoans, right? But it's more like a cultural thing. That's how they. That's how they deal with everything. And then it's like no racism when you deal with it from like the cultural standpoint. It's like it's really. It's just y'all just have to experience. I'm sure this is not the only place where they do that, but this is like the first place where we've been where we've actually been able to like. Well, I'm like not on duty you know working or something we actually being able to mingle with the locals and learn about them and just listen to the stories and stuff and i'm just like i'm in awe at how y'all tell some of these stories because i'm like i want to be one of the greatest storytellers ever which is why i love history and listening to people and talking to people and it's just uh, it's 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 great hold on let me go back up Beautiful butterfly April's journey. Shalom, shalom. Yes, whoever got the scenes calendar, please share. I think that was who was that? Ema or Set Apart Living TV. If you got a share a link or something for everybody. Um take for yes, thank you. Your reading each day helps make each day a step towards keeping each day like a Sabbath. I think because these people are so close to the area near the sinking of pan. Yeah, and they look they have way more information. Like some of the stuff that they didn't told us in textbooks that we got that we got in America. I was like, you know what? Where my matches at? This needs to be taken out of the curriculum because you're teaching this not even from the proper understanding of the natives who actually live here. Like I'm I'm just saying, y'all, it's this is amazing. Okay, so let's do this. Let me go back. Let me reread this about the Sabbath. Should I reread it? Like y'all wanna just let me just ask y'all. Y'all want to reread chapter 14? The first answer wins, so y'all better answer quick. Y'all want me to reread chapter 14 over the Sabbath stuff again and just move to chapter 15? Oh, I think Ray, Ray said yes. Okay, Ray, let's read it again. Okay, page 708. Okay, yes, everybody. Okay, chapter 14 or chapter XIV in Book of Inspiration. These are Tay's revelations of Jehovah's times and seasons appointed unto the chosen. The shortest day on the northern line of the sun shall be the end of the year and shall be called Old Year's Day, saith Jehovah. And the first day thereafter, when the sun on his southern course starteth towards the north, shall be the beginning of the year and shall be called New Year's Day. These are my times of the end and beginning of a year which i created and i made the earth and the sun as my written testimony thereof 
and I blessed and sanctified the old year's day and the new year's day, and I appointed them to be holy days that men might remember the order and the system of my works, order of operations. I didn't catch it. I mean, I read it, but. And I said unto man, from one new year's day unto the succeeding one shall be called one year. For it is one completed oscillation of the earth and of her revolution in the orbit where I placed her. Therefore, what thou hast completed within a year shall be remembered by thee, that thou mayest judge thyself therein. And on the old year's day, thou shalt render up in full forgiveness in all things against all people. And when the setting of the sun on that day, thou shalt be purged of all animosity and claims against every man, woman, and child in all the world. And thou shalt make acknowledgement of this in words and songs and prayers and in tokens of no intrinsic value to whomsoever thou shalt have offended during the past year. Tay said, for which reason the old year's day shall be named the most holy day. Behold, it is in accord with his heavenly kingdoms, and it shall be with thee a day of spiritual communion and of praise to Jehovah and his creations with music and oratory and ceremonies and processions for thy youth, orderly and well-disciplined. And on the New Year's Day, thou shalt rejoice and sing and dance, mingling together, old and young, even as the old year and the new year are joined together side by side. The seventh day of the new year shall be thy next Sabbath day, and it shall be a day of rest and of spiritual communion and praise to Jehovah and his creations with singing and oratory. So also shall every seventh day be a Sabbath, for which reason seven days shall be one week, being six days for labor and one for rest and worship. For this hath been proven in all the world to be good for man. These then shall be the moon's days, months, the first new moon's day after New Year's Day shall be the beginning of the first, hold on, wait, the first new moon's day after the New Year's Day shall be the beginning. That, I just thought about something. Um, the, um, well, yeah, they, they mention it. It's the solstices, right? And even the, the calculate, yeah, that has to do with the solstices. Okay, let me just keep reading. So also shall every seventh day be a Sabbath day, for which reason seven days shall be one week, being six days for labor and one for rest and worship. For this hath been proven in all the world to be good for man. These then shall be the moon's days, months, the first new moon's day after New Year's Day shall be the beginning of the first month and the completion of the fourth quarter of the moon shall be the completion of the first month and it shall be named the first month. So also keep in mind here, I just thought about something else, where it says the first new moon's day after New Year's Day shall be the beginning of the first month. Remember... It the new moon day may not be directly after New Year's Day. Set apart said, um, and the first Sabbath. Hold on, hold on. I missed. I gotta go back up. Yeah, definitely. Um, it has something to do with the solstices too. We have to uh, keep the solstices. In the equation, when the new year begins, it should be like three Sabbath within the first week. When I check, the shortest day of the year is in December. That will make New Year's Day in the winter. That's what Vanette said. And the first Sabbath will fall on a moon day. I just checked. You gotta, um, yeah, you gotta, like, write it down, like, 
I'm in the habit of like writing it down and drawing out the cycles and stuff and, and calculating. And it's like you got to put like a solstice in it. Like all of that has to be accounted. Like we got to like graphic. At least that's what I'm thinking. The graphic to get it just right. Because remember, try not to, when we're doing it, try not to look at the Gregorian day calendar days like we're looking at it because it'll tend to throw us off. Right? Remember, it's going to keep moving along. Right? along the days so that's what my point i was making earlier about christmas and the day and the date right it's going to keep moving along right so um sometime i i notice and i need to double check when they and i think they do this with the solstice as well i think i could be wrong but what i'm how i'm thinking is they with the spring and the winter solstice they it's not necessarily on the same day but they always have it like right um right at uh like the same time period within like a couple days of it happening and it's probably i don't know if it's harder for us here because it's um like i think it, it it's I think it's hard because we may not be using all the information we need, right? We're, because we have a winter, right? Because all places don't have a winter. So you have to look at how they calculate it as well, right? Um, so say like in parts of Africa where they're calculating it where they don't have a winter, how are they calculating it throughout the year? So I think if we look at how each landmass calculates it on what's considered their summer solstice and look at all of it we'll find like a, a um like the basis of everything and we'll be able to begin to calculate and it it'll probably kind of be like what they do with the time zones and how things change because it depends on what hemisphere and how close to the equator and all these things just to make sure we're taking in all these pieces yeah, I think what she said, um, it's hard because these people stole our land and culture. It that That's a big part of it, too. And a lot of stuff wasn't passed down, especially to the Onguis here in Muatama, right? Talking animals. Look, I had so, while looking at all this stuff, I, I think about so much what I've learned through here and just observing things from the different cultures and the whole ungui talking animals and stuff like what they, they call people here, the human beings. It's just another name for humans, right? Um, we're, we're, we're animals with intellect, right? So just looking at some of the animals like with their paws and palms and feet and walking, just different things. And if you don't wear shoes for a while, the bottom of your feet will become acclimated to the land where you're living at. And that's how some people can be barefoot naked in their land and it don't bother them. It's like, bro, where your shoes at? <laughs> right? Um, I don't know. It's this is a lot of stuff. I'm I'm gonna stop trying to explain this at this point because I'm 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 sure I'm gonna screw it up, right? Um, but I, all of that, all of those are pieces of the puzzle. It has to be included in here to get this right. And it might still take some time. Some people may have it down, <laughs> right? That's why because that listen, that's that's like cannibalism, right? Because we are animals too. Like we're 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 mammals. Just like other and some other animals are considered mammals, right? I'm just like you. It's I don't know. It's it just I don't know. The, the days are just getting better. Yeah. So the solar calendar isn't off. The Gregor exactly the Gregorian calendar is off. I agree with that. Um, is it seems calendar the same as the Dead Sea Scrolls calendar? I'm not sure, but based on some of the information, uh. I've gotten, I think that can be an assumption, but I don't know. There's a, there's a book that I'm listening to. I haven't listened to it since I've been on vacation. Um, and it, it gets into the, it seems, um, it's not the, it seems, I thought, I thought it was the audible, it seems Bible, but I'm glad I downloaded it and listened to it. Um, it's, uh, I think it's called Jesus and the Essenes, right? But in it, <clears throat> it's interesting. Because the book is sort of kind of like uh, Susan Martinez's book, um, uh, The Spiritual Guide 
spiritual guide to like the world, whatever. Where it's where she uh, interview have all these different interviews of different people and people who have been possessed by spirits and everything. So what happens in this book? Just a quick summary of it. Um, a woman was uh, interviewing, and this is like the eighteen hundreds, nineteen hundreds, and she was interviewing different people who had um. Uh, maybe they were possessed, oppressed, but entities, other, they will sometimes get put in a sunken place, and the entities or people who have already lost their flesh, they will begin to speak to them. So she started asking questions. So she was interviewing all these different spirits that inhabited um, this person's body, and it started talking about like the different cultures and stuff. Uh, back in the day and where this spirit was from and what time that they lived in during their time on the earth. And I was like, oh, this is interesting because at first I was going to cut it off because it started talking a little bit about like reincarnation and stuff. And I'm glad I didn't cut it off because um, it started explaining what was happening to where I was just kind of half. I was like, oh, this is garbage. <laughs> And I was about to toss it, but then I was like, let me just, let me just keep listening. You know, let me just, let me listen to it all the way through and weigh all the information together, which I'm glad I'm did. Well, I'm glad I did it because in the next chapter, she started really, um, getting into the, the different spirits began to change and it began to talk about why I'm from this era. And so what she was trying to do, she was trying to filter through the spirits to get to one who lived during the time where Jesus lived. And so she had noticed with all the different spirits she'd interviewed that was coming through this lady's body, nobody had mentioned anything about it, Jesus because she's still trying to figure out, was this a real character or was he made up? Is this an allegory and all of this stuff? Until she came up uh, across one particular spirit and he began to talk about the culture and what they did and why they lived in caves and it was in Qumran and even the Dead Sea Scrolls. I was like, oh, that's, that's pretty interesting. You know, so I haven't yet looked into the author of it, but some of the stuff that I have learned about Qumran and the caves, um, inside of Qumran, there, there were actually cities, whole families, communities living in Qumran inside the caves. And they go on to explain how that happened and what they did with the parchments when they wrote um, scriptures or something holy on them, how they would preserve it, and even why some of that stuff was still left there because remember the Essenes were those who were still keeping to like the, the true worship of the one and only creator worshiping Jehovah or Yah the the only creator only right and their rules of their community was different like even even with these scenes the women were treated fairly just like the men to as you get into the Christian Bible, it's like women are less than, but it wasn't like that with the Essenes. Everybody was like this even level. You could have um, women leaders just like you had men leaders, and he began to explain some of that and why some of the caves were abandoned because they were like on the run a lot of times from those who were seeking to kill them because those who were seeking to kill them in that political day they wanted the religions chop them up everybody worship together if you want to worship this you can worship that you want to worship this you can worship that too we all come together we can worship our multiple gods and all of this stuff but the ones that just they don't want any of this they those are the enemies right so when they found these things they would kill them so the book was really interesting as it gave some insights to this but you know, just be aware that this is an entity speaking through a woman that is put in a sunken place, so to speak, to actually tell what happened. So when you listen to it, I'm, I'm not done listening to it yet. So if you want to get it or whatever, and I'll leave the name of that book too. Um, you just weigh the information of what's being said. But some of the things that's in there, you know, is some of the things I found to be true. I was like, okay, well that's true uh, from what I, I verify that that you know it's real interesting to add to your um your um your collection of research material hannah you have that book but haven't gotten into it yeah cosmon dreadful cosmon bless up all right y'all so let me finish reading this oh yeah we are already at an hour and i think i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna we're gonna finish this today and we're gonna end we're not gonna start uh hold on We're not going to start Book of Jehovah's Kingdom on Earth today, which containeth within it the Book of Shalom, right? So we'll start that tomorrow. Actually, y'all, 
tomorrow's not going to be live um because i'll be in the air again uh i would really like to do this one live with y'all and not pre-recorded let, let me let me finish reading this verse 21 verse 21 chapter 14 neither shall it matter or not whether the months overlap and new days a new year's day as they are created and moved by the almighty even so shall man compute and register them for example, a New Year's Day may come upon the 20th day of the 12th moon or on another moon's day. Still, as they fall, so shall they be numbered in truth. As the moon's time differeth to different continents, so shall the month's times of the inhabitants of different continents be locally unto them. But in the intercourse between different nations on different continents, the month the month times shall not be enumerated, but in all such cases, the year and the days thereof shall be named. As, for example, the 70th year and the 96th day, and it shall come to pass that the Sabbath days all around the world shall be the same day unto all people, even with the travel of the sun, whereby Jehovah's heavenly kingdoms shall be in concert with mortals as the times and seasons and all things. So, if because of the rotation of the sun and the moon and the time zones and would it be in light on one side and dark on this side, if everybody observed it according to the time they according to the time zone and the land that they live in, when you do it according to that and not living in America, trying to do it in on Jerusalem or Israel's time, when you do it according to America's time for the time zone you're at, right? Only for where you live. If you keep to it that way, if everybody does that where they are, we would all be celebrating the Sabbath on the same exact time, just like this live, right? I had to adjust my time over here to be on the same time that we normally are at home. So back at home, I'm not in the land of Virginia. I'm in the land of Hawaii, right? I'm in the land of Hawaii. and But in Hawaii, Virginia's time is 1.15 in the morning or 7 or 1.30 on the weekends, right? But in Virginia's time, that's 7.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and on the weekends, 7 30 a.m sabbath is the same way observe it according to the land mass where you live and not according to somebody else because if i'm here in hawaii and i do this at 7 15 or 7 30 hawaii time i'm gonna miss y'all y'all gonna miss me it's never gonna sync up we will never come together because we're a whole six hours um behind my homeland right so that's how I understand this now. So all of those who are living in America in different places, if you're watching this, if you're calculating the Sabbath and you're, sat, you're celebrating it when Israel say you follow channels where they sell it, okay, and they got the Israel clock going, you are wrong every single time, right? Um, so, and I know they they did away with the daylight savings time. Just keep to the time zone time where you are. Because keeping to that, we're all doing it at the same time, right? All right. And we will be in, let's say, it's whereby, listen, verse 27. And it shall come to pass that the Sabbath days all around the world shall be the same day unto all people, even with the travel of the sun, right? Whereby Jehovah's heavenly kingdom shall be in concert with mortals as the times and seasons in all things and that's that's one of the keys as well so all right so let's read this next chapter the next couple chapters they are really really short and then we'll actually be done with uh the whole book of inspiration chapter 15 or chapter xv on page 709 holy uh holy compact day you write uh cosmon dreadful cosmon can't go wrong keeping the creator's time by the luminaries right right i 100 agree with that Okay, as Jehovah 
through his God, bequeathed to the children of Guatama a government unfettered by the name of God or Lord or Savior. So Jehovah sanctified the day. So Jehovah sanctified the day of the ratification and the signing and sealing of his compact. And in parentheses, after his compact is American Constitution as the day of the holy seals. Let me read that again without breaking it up like that. As Jehovah, through his God, bequeathed to the children of Guatama, or America, to the children of Guatama, a government unfettered by the name of God or Lord or Savior, so Jehovah sanctified the day of the ratification and the signing and sealing of his compact, American Constitution, as the day of the holy seal. And the sign thereof he made a hand holding a quill, which shall be the master sign of salutation and the lodge on the day and evening commemorating the same. And Jehovah made the answer to the master sign, the holding up. And in parentheses, it says, by the member of the lodge of a piece of paper signifying the constitution. Therefore, it was said, the master saluted on the sign, day of the holy seal, and the lodge answered in the sign constitution. And Jehovah said, remember this day and keep it holy to the end of the world. For here at was the beginning of the liberty of man. And after man, it's reference letter B. I'm going to page 711. And B says, the constitution was signed on September 17, 1787. But it passed out of theory into law on June 21st, 1788, when New Hampshire, the ninth state, ratified it. It needed the ratification of nine states. Ratification indicated reality and fact. Consequently, June 21st might be the preferred holiday depending on preferred interpretation. A similar ambiguity exists, in, exists with Freedom's Day chapter xvii which is what 25 26 27 freedom's day chapter 27 while the emancipation proclamation declared freedom to all slaves in 10 confederate state in 10 confederate states and was signed on january 1st 1863 it did not end slavery under the law the uh, the abolition of slavery in fact did not occur until the passage of the 13th Amendment. That amendment was passed by Congress on January 31st, 1865, and finally ratified by the states on December the 6th, 1865, thus putting an end to legal slavery once and for all. All right, so go back. And this starts the next chapter, chapter 16 or chapter XVI. What I said, I'm, I'm getting them wrong. Hold on. Take for chapter 17, not 27. When I said 17, I thought that's what I said. I probably didn't. Yeah, XVII is 17. Yeah, X. It's 10, V is 5, and the singles is the 1. So, when you add them up, 17. Right, that's in the second paragraph of the B reference. I'm sorry. Thank you. Okay, chapter 16, or chapter XVI, and the subtitle under um, 16 is S Day, E S day d-a-y and it has reference number 22 and 22 at the bottom says holy veil day v-a-i-l holy veil day okay and this is only six verses as jehovah through his god pulled aside the veil of heaven veil v-e-i-l as jehovah through his god pulled aside the veil of heaven saying let my angels forth together shall converse the living and the dead. So sanctified he the day when the angels of heaven were made known to mortal were made known to mortals, March thirty first, eighteen forty eight. And it has reference twenty three after it and twenty three at the bottom says the following two verses four and five 
were deleted from the 18, 8, 1891 edition, but were included as a footnote at the end of the book. Okay. Verse 20, um, verse 4. Jeho and Jehovah gave the sign a hand holding a side of veil, signifying heaven unveiled as the master's sign in the lodge on the day and evening commemorating the same. And after Jehovah at the beginning of verse 4, it's reference number 25, and 25 just says Jehovah. It's, it's just bold. There's no difference in the spelling. Okay. Verse 5. And he gave to the members of the lodge an answer to the to ant them. Let me start over. And he gave to the members of the lodge to answer the sign three clappings, signifying endless joy. And at the beginning of verse five, after he is reference number twenty five. Twenty five at the bottom also says, I'm sorry, y'all. I messed it up. Twenty four for Jehovah is he. Twenty five he is Jehovah. They just switch it around. It's the same thing, but they switched it. Okay. Verse five. And he gave to the members of the lodge to answer the sign, three clappings, signifying endless joy. And Jehovah said, <clears throat> excuse me, and Jehovah said, Remember this day and keep it holy to the end of the world. For without books and without arguments, behold, I have proven unto you the continued life of the soul of man. And after continued life after life is reference number 26. And 26 at the bottom says the immortality of the soul. All right, next chapter, chapter 17, chapter XVII. The subtitle is Freedom's Day. And after Freedom's Day, it's reference number 27. And 27 says, The Fallen Swords Day. Okay. For instance, I ordered the book, but it hadn't, it's probably at the house now, um, the book Timetable of Prophecy. He said, Brother Selah has a book called The Timetable of Prophecy, spot on. I haven't read it yet because it didn't come before we left here, but I'm excited to read it and go through and, and check and test the information. Okay. Freedom's Day, verse 1, page 709. As Jehovah, through his God, delivered into freedom, Guatama's slaves, and thus to general slavery dealt the final blow. So Jehovah blessed that day and sanctified it. And after sanctified it, it has reference number 28. And 28 at the bottom says, the following two verses, 2 and 3, were deleted from the 1891 edition, but were included as a footnote at the end of the book. Verse 2, and Jehovah, and after Jehovah's reference number 29, 29 says he for Jehovah. Okay. And Jehovah gave to man as the master sign in the lodge a hand pointing toward a pen signifying, I have proved this mightier than the sword. The hand is mightier than the sword. The pen is mightier than the sword. Y'all ever heard that in school? Somebody didn't read a waspy. In school, but they ain't tell y'all where they getting they, they cool sayings from. Let me read that again. And Jehovah gave to man as the master's sign in the lodge, a hand pointing toward a pen, signifying, I have proved this mightier than the sword. Right? Pointing to the pen. This is a sign. The pen is mightier than the sword. Right? That's still true today. And he, and after he is reference number 30, and 30 at the bottom says Jehovah. So they're interchanging he with Jehovah, right? Okay. And he gave to the members in the lodge to answer in the sign, clasp hands and looking upward, signifying in thy praise Jehovah. Jehovah said, 
Remember the day of proclamation of freedom, for it is my day which I bequeath unto you as a day of freedom and all righteous jollification, which ye shall keep every year and commemorate unto the end of the world. All right, last chapter for a book of inspiration, chapter 18, and it's Holy Cosmon Day. And after Holy Cosmon Day, it's reference letter C. And chapter 18 in Roman numerals is XVIII. So go to page 711 for C. And this is pretty long. This is. All of this is C. Very last footnote, and it's like a whole chapter itself. So before we even get started reading this, let's read this footnote on page 711. C. This date, Holy Cosmon Day, this date relates to an event that has not yet occurred, at least at the time of the publication of this edition of Owaspi. It remains within the province of some future generation. When the new dispensation prophesied in the book of Shalom does not come to pass, conditions, hold on. When the new dispensation prophesied in the book of Shalom does come to pass, conditions, will become suitable for the resurgence of Suez and Sargis among its inhabitants. That's good. So remember how when we talked about um, what some people were saying, how they looking at uh, uh, John Nubaro, right? They said, oh, well, he did this. What was his, his little city called? The city of Shalom. They started trying to discredit it. But if we read it, we understand, we know that he got ahead of, he got ahead of the creator, trying to bring something to pass where the conditions are not right for this thing yet right because think about it in the 1800s there are still some things that hadn't developed yet even just even with like the uh the cleanliness and stuff of people and just different things and the development of different trades and understanding how the body really works and how it thrives on a plant-based diet all of this stuff they it, it hadn't come to its fruition yet which is why the city of shalom could not be fulfilled they were able to I ain't going to say fulfilled. They were able to get some portions of that community of Shalom going like they did. But eventually it failed because they were they were getting ahead of the creator. Not realizing the other pieces and the generations that had to be born with the different gifts that they had to add to all of this. Right? Alright, so this, listen. This date relates to an event that has not yet occurred, at least at the time of the publication of this edition of Owaspi. It remains within the province of some future generation. When the new dispensation prophesied in the Book of Shalom does come to pass, conditions will become suitable for the resurgence of Suez and Sargis among its inhabitants. Remember what Suez and Sargis is? Everybody here probably... Um, uh, this being those who are able to like see clearly, like prophesy and see clearly, not just stuff being downloaded to you. Um, but they have literally been trained and the lot, they are born from the womb with the gifts of being able to see and hear, and they're able to do things. Um, uh, they can, they can materialize and dematerialize their body, like all of these things. Like we see different in some different religions. Like we see J.C. walking through walls and stuff. And that's a part of some of this. But they just pull out bits and pieces of stuff and just kind of lump it all together and give you one story without giving you the full history and development of things over time. And where we think things like it's the same thing like, okay, seven days the earth was created in seven liberal days. Well, we know that's foolery at its best, right? They've taken thousands and thousands and millions of years and just lumped everything into day one day two day three when when you look at it and actually do real research you'll realize that this wasn't like a day like we understand a day this was a whole period of time right and they were actually the days were actually ages and phases of the earth right mm -hmm. angela said Verse 4, and Jehovah said, remember this day and keep it holy. Oh, I finished reading that already. We're in the next chapter. 1800 Indian Wars, Native Schools. Tickle said, y'all see all these holidays we have now and some closeness to what we should be celebrating to the end of the world. They forever stealing and repurpose the creators. They always repurpose in the Father's <laughs> times and stuff, right? Like, like they creating stuff. 
that's that's why y'all look that's why y'all gotta travel that's why y'all really have to travel and get out there and um mingle with the natives not not just going to the the tourist spots the tourist spots is what they create what they want you to believe this whole place is about actually get out there and mingle take them country drives and them island drives and the places oh don't go over there that's what all the natives at just still here what we built nice and pretty no go and i mean be smart right don't go out there and get yourself killed <laughs> right but be smart about it um but if you can right and don't go by yourself i mean get it just just learn about your brethren and your sister and all around the world and some of these things you can see mm, they still trying to um they still trying to narrate the stories how they want to and we miss pieces of the truth by constantly listening to that by not having that lab time so to speak right you get that all that 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 book knowledge and stuff but you don't actually have lab to say okay something is wrong with this man because that's not working either it was uh somebody wrote this wrong or they didn't think about this and include this and that and we find out the same thing in the furniture industry with the manuals and stuff you got people that sitting behind the desk all the time um trying to tell people out in the field well the manual says this well um i'm telling you by being here out in the field this doesn't work like this so their understanding of the manual is different from the understanding of what the workers in the actual field actually have um so yeah this is it's, it's amazing but yeah the the what they tried to do it wasn't right for for shalom to come to pass yet right we're getting closer to it but we're still not there mariah shalom shalom you working on moving toward japan ah oh, man it's gonna be awesome i know i got some family members and family members and some friends that's lived over there for a little while hopefully by next year i can leave to south korea and then see japan i also want to go to scotland and ireland travel do it and come back and share with us right take pictures post it on your social media all that stuff help us learn right Okay, let me finish reading this footnote, y'all. This reference. Okay, let me just start over. C, or Holy Day of Cosmon, Holy Cosmon Day. This date relates to an event that has not yet occurred, at least at the time of the publication of this edition of Owaspi. It remains within a province of some future generation. When the new dispensation prophesied in the Book of Shalom does come to pass, conditions will become suitable for the resurgence of Suez and Sargis among its inhabitants. The difference being that a second resurrection community on earth will become amenable to inspiration from the second resurrection heavens above, which we are there now, right? Because we can hear directly from the second heaven, not just the Lord shenaniganizing first heaven, right? But we get light. And whatever light you're getting, you want to make sure it's coming from second heaven or above. Seriously, just keep it simple like that. Anything coming from the first, you in danger. You might you might be in danger. I'ma just say forego that first, go to the second. The difference being that a second resurrection community on earth will become amenable to inspiration from the second resurrection heavens above. Such advanced communion will require set times and locations when the advanced angelic realms will formally meet with their mortal counterparts on earth. These exclusive reunions, of course, would only be known to those who become part of that new dispensation yet to be realized. Just like um, that we see that like on a real tiny, 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 minute level, right? Say if you have... Uh, uh set prayer times right and if you're consistent with that if you are here's what okay say you got a prayer closet and y'all done probably learned this <laughs> you um you um you probably learned it in church right going to your prayer closet and god will meet you there well technically there is some truth to that right because if you develop your prayer life and uh a relationship with the father talking back and forth we know we have our shards angels helping us and it's probably them that's passing the answers down but we'll talk to them because if you talk directly to them not that you can't you can right but if you get into the habit of talking to them and the different ones that are around you it will tend to pull you away from talking directly to the father so as the process goes talk just always talk to the father directly they'll translate the, not translate they get the message to him and he'll respond to us and they'll give it 
and they'll they'll give the message to us right at least that's how i'm understanding it now and sometimes you will hear directly from the father right but what happens is if there's a set time where you go into your prayer closet or anywhere everybody knows this is our meeting time this when i show up and there's and if you depend on how consistent and how long you've been doing it there's actually a residue a presence of heaven that lingers in that place and it literally becomes holy sanctified ground it really does like if y'all haven't experienced that or haven't even tested that go test that right and then you would get to the point where you'll be craving at times like yo I'm, I'm coming i know you're there waiting for me and it's like that space set aside sacred alone it's like when you get in there it's just it it, it just picks right back up where it left off at right um so just keep that in mind listen such advanced communion will require set times and locations when the advanced angelic realms would formally meet with their mortal counterparts on earth these exclusive reunions of course would only be known to those who become part of that new dispensation yet to be realized it may also be helpful to point out that a transformation of such magnitude may actually evolve in stages over a protracted time frame considering that cosmon endures for a longer cyclic period than some people may realize the common used term cosmine era is actually a generic reference to a period of time with common distinctive characteristics unique to itself e.g the industrial era but within the context of a waspy an era has a completely different mathematical meaning that could lead one to misinterpret cosmon's actual time span an era is a 12,000 year interval consisting of four approximately 3,000 year arcs or cycles called one square. Ashong chapter 2 verse 6. However, Cosmon is actually a 72,000 year time period called a season, which is preceded by two other seasons supporting, supporting human life called Cephas and Hawk. To be clear on this fact, one must first be cognizant of the number of arc cycles Dan has encompassing humanity's existence. Sathantes arrived at the end of Hawk, a period of a time having just completed 24 Dan has. Sathantes chapter 2 verse 29. The period of time following Hawk and Cephas, which also consisted of 24. Hold on. The period of time following Hawk was Cephas, which also consisted of 24 Danhas. We know this because Sathantes through Neph covered 16 arcs, see synopsis of 16 cycles, followed by eight more arcs of Av through Lika, see Savorkum fold out, page 484. So both Hawk and Cephas had 24 arcs total for each season that might sound like a bunch of blah 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 what did you just say <laughs> if you ain't been here you probably need to read that a couple more times and actually go back to them references and look at the Savorkum fold out remember the Savorkum fold out This is literally a fold out. It folds. Page 484. Go to page 484. And it's the Savor fold out, right? And it shows the um, arc cycles. Um, Af, Sue, Apollo, Thor, Osiris, Fraga Patty, Spencer, Armish, Lika, right? And within this, uh, it also has by their names the the cycle or the years like 3600 years 3200 years 2800 32 33 3100 2400 3400 years like all of this stuff and words in here which is explained beforehand so you might have to just go back and look over it and study a little bit to understand it when it's talking about the Dan Haas, Cephas, Hawk, all that stuff right um 
So we'll we're gonna we're gonna read through it again. So hopefully, if you didn't catch it the first time, you'll be here in a few weeks when we start it over, right? Okay. So hold on, Sathantes. No, since an average arc is about three thousand years in duration, and each era is four arcs, then twenty-four arcs would be both six eras or seventy-two thousand years. Knowing that Cephas ended with the arrival of Cosmon, and you can see Fragapati chapter 21, verse 24, it becomes clear why on the first page of Owaspi, it says that the seventh era is at hand, or the arrival of Cosmon. Now, we know the arrival of Cosmon is the era where we are completely right for not just one or two people hearing from the creator and being called prophets, right? It is the era where multiple people have developed and generations are being born that have their spirits developed enough um, to where we all can begin to hear and like truth is restored. And, you know, it's, it's just an amazing time. And we're just at the beginning of this, right? And, and even after we are dead and gone, there's still going to be multiple generations after us coming towards the ending part of the Cosmon cycle. And they're going to be way more advanced, right? They're literally, like I said before, they're going to be born like superhero stage coming out the womb, being able to do things supernatural just because that's the way humanity has developed over time, right? Now we know that humanity... First came forth during the darkness of Hak at the end of the Samoan age. We also know that Sephas was the period of earthly dominions. As explained above, both of these periods were 72,000 years in length. Quoting Fragapati, chapter 24, XXIV, chapter 24, verses 42 through 43, we see, in the first days, I blew my breath upon the lands of earth, and man became a living soul, i.e. hawk. Then in the second time, I moved my hand upon the earth, and man went forth in power, i.e. Cephas. The time shall surely come, and in the third season, when my voice shall be heard by mortals, i.e. Cosmon. Therefore, just like Hawk and Cephas, Cosmon must be the same length of time, namely 72,000 years long, and we see that all three are called seasons. Consequently, Cosmon is not a Danha, not an era, but a 72,000 year time span called a season. And for all of those that think the earth is only 6,000 years old, my G, you is way off. You is way off because we could not have developed in 6,000 years like we're developed today. It it took the land, it took earth to formulate. It it took longer than 6,000 years for the earth to formulate and, you know, the, the, the vegetation and stuff to spring up, to become a habitable place, right? Even after the Aji and all that stuff, it had to develop to a place where it was right for where it can now sustain life here, right? That's way longer than 6,000 years, people. Oh, it's in a book. I'm so excited to read it, Anita. Thanks. She said it's in a uh, timetables of prophecy that say La wrote. Okay. Okay, so let's finish up this chapter. So go back to page 710 at verse 1. That was just the subtitle, Holy Cosmon Day. All of that was that. So now... The whole chapter is 28 verses and it's going to be the end of the book. All right. Beside the above, Jehovah gave one more holy day, Cosmon Day, which he also commanded to be kept in commemoration of another matter, which Jehovah commanded to be secret with the faithless for a certain period of time, the which time hath not expired to this day. Excuse me. Therefore, the day of Cosmon is still a secret with the faithless. The, and Jehovah said that mortals and angels may live and labor in concert. Behold, I have given certain days whereby large congregations on earth may be met by my organic heavens in reunion, mortals and angels for the happiness of both and for the glory of my works. Now behold also, as by my presence I inspire thee, when thou laborest with me, 
and thou art doing righteously and with purity and love, so also is it with thee in regard to my angels. When thou makest and keepest thy corporal body pure and clean, my angels who are pure and clean come to thee and aid thee and to enlighten thee. And when thou puttest away all unclean thoughts and all selfish desires and seekest to obtain wisdom and to learn how to and learn how best thou can help thy fellow man, behold, my angels of light and wisdom come to thee. And by virtue of their presence, which thou seest not, they inspire thy soul in the light of thy creator. Man hath said, I will not be a seer, nor a prophet, nor a suess, nor sargus. Verily, I will not have angels with me to teach me or to give me any light or knowledge under the sun. Whatever I can attain, it shall be mine own. Wiser it is for me to attain to knowledge and to do things for myself and to do things of myself than to have angels come and give it to me or manifest through me. Verily, I will not be used by man nor angel, for it would be prostituting my flesh and my spirit to others. Behold, my body was given to me for mine own use and profit to establish and develop my own soul unto eternal happiness in individuality. Alike unto all people is my presence, saith Jehovah. I am unto the just and the unjust. I am everywhere, both in darkness and in light. Because thou art in darkness, thou beholdest not me. Because thou art imperfect in flesh and spirit, thou deniest me. Because thou art confounded with inharmony, thou believest not in me. He who hath not an ear for music discovereth not a tune, even as he that is discordant denieth my person. To the pure there is no selfishness, neither for earthly things nor for their own flesh and spirit. A pure man is as a clear glass. He can see out of himself and so perceive my angels and me. Through the pure man, angels can see mortality as well as spirituality. Their presence inspireth him to understand all things. As much with the man that is not a seer or a suess are the angels, as with those that are seers or suess or sargus. Because thou seest not, nor hearest angels, only proveth thy darkness, but proveth not the absence of angels. To the dark come the dark, with the dark, abide the dark, both angels and mortals. More is the man of darkness ruled by angels than is the man of light. That's amazing. Look, it said, listen, you, you, you so quick trying not to be ruled by angels and put yourself in a sunken place that you don't realize that you're more ruled by them than the children of light. Let me, listen, 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 listen. Let me read this again. Go back up to 15. To the pure, there is no selfishness, neither for earthly things, nor for their own flesh and spirit. A pure man is as a clear, is as a clear glass. He can see out of himself and so perceive my angels and me. Through the pure man, pure angels can see mortality as well as spirituality. Their presence inspireth him to understand all things. As much with the man that is not a seer or a suess, are the angels as with those that are seers or suess or sargus, because thou seest not nor heardest angels, only proveth thy darkness, but proveth not the absence of angels. To the dark come the dark, with the dark abide the dark, both angels and mortals. More is the man of darkness ruled by angels than is the man of light, right? Because the man of darkness, you got the whole first heaven and hotter talking to you right and do this go do that yeah be mad get back you know like all of that stuff you don't realize you're really being ruled by them more than those who walk in pure spirit and are connected to the second heaven and above <clears throat> behold i created thee not to fill any place in all the world for thine own sake neither gave i thy flesh nor thy spirit to be thine only these also shalt thou relinquish, saying to thee, O Jehovah, I give all, my flesh, my spirit, 
mine and all my service to be thine forever. Thou shalt say, Appropriate thou me, soul and body, in whatsoever way thou canst, that I may do the most good unto others, mortals and angels. Until thou attainest this, thou shalt not hear my voice, nor see my hand, as I gave away myself, and thus created all things, so shalt thou follow in my footsteps in order to become one with me. Herein lieth the secret of wisdom, truth, love, and power, time without end. <clears throat> and this is absolutely amazing. There was a thought that I had um, that I just remembered that I was thinking about yesterday. As I was just walking through, looking, observing things, and just thinking about scriptures and thinking about things from a waspy I'm thinking about the Father and how he seems to always elude our capture, right? But yet he's always ever-present with us, teaching us and guiding us along the way through observation and, and reflection time, right? And we complain sometimes that we can't see him or show me the Father when he's been constantly showing us himself all the time. And even though we don't see him manifested in the flesh like we see flesh, like sometimes like, well, if I, don't, if I don't see it, if I can't touch it, I don't believe it, right? But you don't realize we are still encapsulated in the womb. And the creator, he is fully in the realm where we will be born into, right? And so when we are just like, it's just like now, when we are fully born into that realm, nobody here will be able to see us. Right, we're living encapsulated in like complete darkness. Think about a baby in the womb, right? A baby in the womb can hear the voice of its mother and father, <clears throat> yet it can't see it, right? <clears throat> and that's a lot of times, excuse me, <clears throat> that's a lot of times what's happening to us here. We're in the womb. Oh, well, uh, I hear something going on. Maybe y'all just don't exist. Baby, you're still in the womb developing. You'll be born soon, and you're going to see that we do exist. And we're not going to have flesh like you have flesh now. You just cut this. This is literally, we're in multiple wombs, y'all. Not only are we in the womb of the earth, right? But we're in, the, our spirit is within the womb of our flesh. So a lot of times the things that we perceive spiritually is coming from, from the place of where mom and dad comes from when we're inside the womb and when babies are born and they hear the familiar voice and they know, oh, now I can put a face to a voice. I'm not just hearing a voice anymore. I'm here now with you in this realm and I can, I can, I can see you now, right? So I'm sure when we get in that realm, we'll be able to see or perceive the father a little bit more in that realm if we keep developing shucks. There may be a, another whole realm of not seeing spirit <laughs> to where the father is in. I'm sure it's there. He's just taking us through the different phases of life and each womb phase and birth phase. It's like we're being born over and over again, right, to different levels, right? So that's how I like to look at the term born again, not born again, baptized in the name of Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit of Jesus, save my soul. Not that. I got matches for that. right but if you look at it from the spiritual aspect it's like growth is happening all around and the father is truly with us every step of the way all right y'all so that's it i'm done i'm about to go back to sleep 7-11 hold on write this down 7-11 so this is the last part today so this is part four of four in the book of inspiration y'all it is wednesday october the 12th